Hi everyone, this is Adam here from Event Industry News. I'm here with Mike, who is the CEO of an organization called Glissa. Um, Glissa helped to make presentations better, if I'm right in saying, right? Nothing, that's fine. Um, today, I'm going to ask Mike some questions around how you can make presentations more engaging and interactive. Um, that's both from an organizer's point of view and from a speaker's point of view. Um, so Mike, what, what can people do to do that? What, what's the like, first step, let's say? I think, as with anything, you've got to think about what you're trying to achieve from the event itself. So it's great to say, oh, we want to make this interactive, we want to make it more fun. But ultimately, you're running the event for a purpose. Yeah. So it all comes back to what are you trying to achieve? So I'll give an example. So say you're running uh, an employee event, so it's a staff event. It might be a monthly meeting or it might be a once a year sales meeting. And one of your objectives might be to measure the happiness of the staff. Okay. So you might do that through a feedback form or you might do that through a survey monkey, but actually you can engage them within the presentation to answer that. So you could use, say, polling software um, to ask them their you know, current state of mind, and that might be right up front before the, the event starts, and you could poll them on a whole series of questions. And you've got that gives you your, your base level. You could then do the same um, later on in the presentation or maybe at the end of the presentation. So the idea being that by using the, the making the presentation interactive, engaging them in some polls, and then measuring two statuses, the start of the presentation and, the, and then the end, you can actually see whether that event has done its job. And okay. that's kind of, you know, that's a great way of saying, was the event right and are, are our employees happy? And that's from the organizer's point of view, right? Yeah. So, and, and I believe we've spoken before on one of the ideas that so you presented to me, which I've not really heard before, was actually using polls as an opener from a speaker's point of view. So to get the actual audience engaged, you know, let's let's ask them a question first and then go into the presentation. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I, I, how many speakers uh, actually ask the event organiser to tell them a little bit more detail about the audience? I mean, some do, but some don't. Some mm -hmm. just sort of turn up and deliver their regular presentation. But actually, your presentation, or at least the style or the detail you're going to, should be different depending on your audience. So if I'm speaking to a technical audience, I'm going to go into a lot more detail on particular points, and I'm going to brush over other stuff. If I'm speaking to a less technical audience, maybe I need to explain things a little bit more. So what you can do is actually create some interaction at the start and understand what that audience is. So what's their experience level? What job roles are they in? And actually, by polling that sort of information early on, you can quickly then alter the, the language that you're going to be using later yeah. on in the presentation because you know your audience, and that's got to be a good thing. Yeah, really good speakers, when they present at events, can change up the direction that they go based on the feedback. I suppose it's like a comedian. If the, if the audience is responding and laughing, then they know they're onto a good thing. If they're kind of quiet, then... But with most events, especially B2B events, you don't necessarily get that interaction. So yeah. using tools like that is a really good way. And pe people who are trainers, people who are teachers understand this inherently. That's what they do all the time. They're responding to cues from their audience and they're repeating points or going into more detail or moving on, depending on that. And I think presentations are the same. If you're presenting, you're doing it for three reasons. One, you're teaching or educating people. Mm -hmm. Two, you're selling something. You're trying to explain a product so that people want to buy it or want to know more. Or three, you're building a brand. That's a brand as a speaker or brand as an organization that you're representing. And if, and if your presentation's not doing that because you're, you're making things too complicated or you're skipping over things that people don't really understand, then you're not really doing any of those things. So your presentation's yeah. less valuable than if you've done that. So if you can use any form of interaction to make your presentation better, then that's got to be a good thing. And let's talk about, I mean, you are you do have a piece of technology yourself that obviously helps speakers and organizers do this. Let's have a talk about just quickly some of the key features that helps your organizers to do what you've just been saying in your speakers. Um, what, what kind of tools are integrated into the Glissa platform that allow to do that? Okay, so we started with the presentation. So we said we're we, we kind of call ourselves presenter tech first and okay. event tech second because we've said, right, here's a presentation, this is how it's normally delivered. What things do either presenters or audiences also want to do other than just sit in that presentation or just give that presentation? So first thing we said was, you know, the audiences want the content. So we, we said, well, why not? They've all got phones, they've all got smartphones. Why can't you share that content live? Um, and I think that's important because now whenever you see content online, you instantly start sharing it, you start downloading it, you start interacting with it. And we've, we basically wanted to move all of those online experiences into the kind of offline live environment. Yeah. So we share the slides live, we allow you to comment on the slides, we allow you to um, 
aren't supposed to be allowed to use, aren't allow you to tweet the slides, which is really common now. You see people taking photos yep. uh, because they want to tweet the slides or they want to take them home. We just let you do that automatically. And then we let audiences download the slides at the end and with any of the personal notes that they've written. So all of those things that I was already doing offline, like scribbling down notes on a piece of paper or taking photos of slides, we've just put them all online and made them enabled them all through an audience's phone. I'm, I'm exactly the same. I was out in a, an event in Vegas in October and I had just that experience, great presentation, um, delivered by a great speaker, some great data and insight that I wanted as a journalist to kind of feed back out there on event industry news. Wasn't aware that slides would be available after, so I was there with my phone doing exactly the same on the front row, taking pictures of, of slides, and it was it's really cumbersome. Um, and I, yeah. I, I, the other thing about that one presentation, although it was a small environment, it was really hard to kind of engage the speaker at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and I think that the, the other thing is that the speakers are also collecting all that data. So if you're engaging an audience, you're, you're allowing them to interact with you through their device live, you're, create, you're creating a load of information that's coming back to you. And a lot of that information you can respond to there and then, so it may be a question feed and you can answer the three most popular questions. But it might be that you're gathering a bunch of data that you can use afterwards. So you can actually, you know, you've presented to 100 people and there you go, you've got 100 email addresses of everyone in the audience. You might see a handful of those that you actually want to follow up with as a speaker because they might be potential customers or um, you have really wanted to meet them but yeah. you never had an opportunity. Or you might have got 20, 30 questions of which you are only answered three. You can follow up individually with each of those people that ask you that question and that's a great opportunity to meet them, follow up with them and get and start to build a relationship. Um, so there's lots of things that can happen using technology that can that it allows you to do things after the presentation. Yeah. So many presentations, you spend all that time building the slides, practicing in front of the mirror, go on stage, give it your all, get the adrenaline rush, you step off stage and then it's dead. It's kind of like it hits a, hits a brick wall. And actually that presentation should be the start of a conversation with those 100 people that you've just presented to. And that's the idea, it's that we can use tech to plug that presentation yeah. into uh, an extended relationship with between audiences and presenters. Brilliant. So if the audience that's listening today or watching this video wants to learn more about Glissa, maybe how you guys can help them or any resources I suppose that you guys have got on maybe your website, your blog or anything like that, where can these guys go to check you out? Yep, so it's uh, glissa.com and we've got a bunch of YouTube videos, we write blogs all the time. Um, and we're always looking for more ideas. You know, people, we, we had a great idea the other day. Um, someone suggested us to us hooking up Glitter to the lighting in the room. So basically, okay. people are voting regularly throughout the presentation on their mood, and the lighting changes from red to blue depending on how happy they are. We thought it was an amazing idea. We're going to try and implement it. <laughs> we want more ideas like that. So if anyone's got crazy ideas, we're the first place to come to. We will have a look at it and see whether we can help you use tech to really make your event awesome. Maybe this should be an off switch and then if, if they're doing really badly, people could just switch the lights. Yeah, on. just kill all the power, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, guys, well, this has been uh, Mike from Glissa and Adam from Event Industry News. Um, if you've got anything that you want to add to this, then you know, tweet us at Event News Blog, um, comment on uh, the post below, and tell us what you want to see more of. Thanks a lot.